Hello and welcome back to Common Connected. I am your host Janine Halloran and I'm here today to talk to you about coping skills. So I want to just give you a brief overview of coping skills and the way that I like to talk with kids about coping skills. So basically a coping skill is a strategy you can use to deal with big feelings. So you can divide coping skills up into healthy versus unhealthy coping skills. So quick example, if you are watching two kids and they get mad because one of them steals another leg person's Legos. If they use their words, that's a healthy coping skill. If they punch their brother because they took their Legos, that's an unhealthy coping skill, right? So just like kids have different learning styles, they have different coping styles. And that's what I discovered over time with the kids that I was working with. There were certain kids that tended to like relaxation strategies. There were certain kids who tended to like movement. Certain kids, especially those with sensory processing issues, really liked having some sensory um, coping skills that they could use. So not all coping skills work everywhere and work all the time in every place. So for instance, this is an example I often use. So like if you needed, if a cope, it's a perfectly healthy coping skill to take a break and go lay down. But if you take a break and go lay down at home, that's cool and acceptable. If you take a break and go lay down in the middle of math class, your teacher will get upset. So it's helpful to have a lot of different kinds of coping skills in order to um, help kids have a bigger toolbox so that they can help they can deal with when they feel upset when they feel mad when they feel sad when they feel anxious and in school versus at home versus on the playground versus at a restaurant versus out at a social event so it's really great to have a variety of coping skills so one thing I started doing several years ago was dividing up coping skills into these different categories and it started sort of organically. So I was working with this group and you know, as a you know, fresh face counselor, I have these like lots and lots of like 101 ways to deal with stress, right? And so I would, you know, have this little sheet and then I had this one girl turn and look at me and say, I, Janine, I cannot figure out what coping skill to use from this list. It's just way too long and overwhelming. And I said, okay, that's fair. I, I completely understand it. So right then and there, we started trying to divide up the coping skills and figure out, well, what strategy, what category would that fit in? How did these work together? How does the, how did those work together? And it sort of started organically. So I started, um, creating these different categories. So right now, um, if you look at the coping skills checklist that is available at copingskillsforkids.com, it's divided into five different coping styles, and um, which I love, which I think is really helpful for kids. So um, the first style is relaxation. So that's all about deep breathing, grounding techniques, um, progressive muscle relaxation. So those are the things that are designed to help kids relax and calm down. The second section would be distraction, and that's all about ways to help kids uh, stop perseverating or to be able to move on. So distraction is not avoiding the problem, and I, I always like to be very clear about this, um, but there are times when kids can't do anything else, like maybe they've processed everything already and they, they can't think of anything else that they need to do um, or that they can do. Um, maybe their grandma is sick in the hospital and they're having a really hard time focusing at school or at home because all their all that's on their brain is thinking about their grandma or they've already talked about it and they've tried to figure out um, what to do and they've sort of solved the problem but they just can't get their mind off of it and it's really a distraction they're they're actually having a hard time focusing in school so or focusing at home so it's really important to this is to understand that this is not ignoring a problem it's not um, avoiding a problem but it's helping a kid manage those feelings until they can either process it or to help them move past something that they've already processed the next section is movement so this is just big physical movements or small physical movements it really helps with that fight piece of fight flight or freeze What's great is that, you know, you have kids get all this rush of energy in their body and they need some way to get it out and we want them to figure out ways to get it out safely. So they can use big body movements like doing wall push-ups, running around the house, like literally I've had my child run around 
um, the outside of our house when he has too much energy, um, doing jumping jacks, doing sit-ups or push-ups, uh, jumping on a trampoline. Those would be some big body movements that kids can do. And some small body movements kids could do would be squeezing something like squeezing um, a stress ball or squeezing Play-Doh or TheraPutty doing something with their hands, just using small body movements to be able to help manage those feelings that are sort of rising up in your body when you, ha when you get into that fight, flight, or freeze mode. The fourth is all about sensory. So these are ways that you can use your senses to be able to manage your emotions and manage your feelings. So this these include things like using a body sock, using a weighted blanket, using aromatherapy, using a sand tray, uh, playing on gel tiles, all sort of things that can help kids regulate using their senses. And this can really help for those kids, especially who have sensory processing issues or sensory processing disorder. And then the final coping style is processing. So this is helping kids identify their feelings, labeling their feelings, figuring out what made them feel a certain way, figuring out what triggers them, figuring out how to process and talk through those things that are bothering them. This is a really this is the this is the toughest one, I think, because this is the one where you have to do a lot of thinking and a lot of examining and trying to help figure out, well, okay, so what led me to feel this way? A great way to start talking with kids about coping skills is just to use the coping skills checklist and it's really super easy to use and the directions are at the top of it. So you basically check off the strategies that kids already use, you cross off the ones that they've tried and they, you know that they don't like and you circle the ones that they want to try, that they haven't tried yet. And so that first section, the one where you're checking those off, those are really powerful because those are the strategies kids already have. And they may not have been able to link that they can use those strategies to help manage their feelings, but they totally can. And so that's really a powerful list. The second most powerful list is the ones that you circle because there, that's a great way to help kids figure out how to expand their coping skills. So I really recommend that you can that you start by just using the coping skills checklist as a jumping off point for having the conversation about what strategies work for them, um, figuring out what strategies they could try the next time and practicing some new strategies to add to their coping skills toolkit. So until next time, I'll talk to you later.